Thank you for joining us. Today on Ringsiders, we are joined by the Batiri, also known as Louis Valley and Chris Peaks, two guys who have been, well, I, I was very excited to see you in AEW Dark recently. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but guys, thank you so much for joining us. Now, it's a pleasure, man. Well, this, is our, this is our first interview, uh, uh, basically on camera, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. is uh, definitely the first interview without any kind of face paint or anything. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the first ever, really. I think, the face. I think the first time I'd seen you about the face paint was on AEW Dark. Like, yeah, that's about yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, probably the first mainstream thing we've done without paint. And this is not, the, not that we've done not, any mainstream <laughs> shit with paint. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was going to say this is the second mainstream thing you've done. Then I realized yes. this isn't mainstream. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here because I have watched you since about 2010 in Chikara. Uh, oh. was like, we've got the Bateri coming on. And I was like, the Bateri, you mean the actual Bateri from Chikara? And <laughs> Jamie hasn't watched Chikara before. Uh, so I showed him and he was like, oh, right. These guys have been around a long time then. And I was like, well, yeah, you could say that. I mean, in wrestling terms, I guess a decade's a long time. You've been teaming for mm-hmm. 12 years, is it? Yeah, we're, we're old now. So uh, you're going to have old. to start referring to us in dog years at this point. <laughs> Well, yeah, we, we started Chikar. Um, Chris started in August 2010 at Young Lions Cup. Yeah. And uh, I started the month after him in September 2010. Uh, you know, that's how we started together as a Bateri. Yeah. I mean, was it an instant thing? Did you know you were going to be a team or did it happen naturally? You know, it, it's funny. I had, uh, I, I started training when I was 15 and immediately met Jigsaw. Right. So we've known each other forever. And, uh, one point, maybe when I was 17, 18, he went off and he started doing Chikara. I was making my rounds, doing other places in New York and, and training. And at one point, uh, he brought me in. He, he kept putting in a word. And finally, they were like, all right, let's check him out. They brought me in. And as soon as I showed up, I remember him telling me, all right, we already know you're going to be a demon. And I was like, all right, I'm a demon. So uh, they actually had me partnered. The original Kodama was supposed to be this dude named Awesome Andy. Right. I don't know if you remember, he did some stuff with Lucha, the MTV Lucha I show. The name. I can't picture him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he was about a foot taller than me. Bald. Well, it, was, it was a weird look. Fourth graders are about a foot taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a strange fit, but I was like, all right, this is cool. So we started working together. Uh, about a week before my debut, Young Lions Cup, I get a call. Uh, awesome Andy's moving back to Texas. Do you know a Kodama? And I had been on a few shows and training with Louie. And I was like, I know a dude that'll look like my brother in face paint. And he was like, all right, bring him in. Let's do it. And that was it. Bateri was born. That's awesome. I, <laughs> it's one of those gimmicks where, like, when you think about it, it's like, well, they're two demons. It's a kind of about their gimmick, but I love it. Like, the first time I saw it, I was like, all right, only in wrestling can two demons decide they want to be pro wrestlers, you know? Like... <laughs> You don't ever get like a demon thinking, oh, I'm going to be an accountant or anything. It's <laughs> always in wrestling that you get the, the crazy gimmicks. And that's what I love about it. Uh, how did you guys like fit into that gimmick then? Did, did you, when you found out like, okay, we're going to be playing demons, was it right? Well, we're going to have to wear face paint or was that just something that came down the line? Uh, for, for me, I knew it was going to be face paint. I had been painting my face doing stuff on indies in, in and around New York. So I was already, used to, I started off in a mask originally. Yeah. Uh, I decided I wanted to breathe. So I started painting my face instead. <laughs> uh, and I just kind of transitioned out of that and was like, all right, let me try to do something, Chris something. And just as I was in that space, they were like, all right, we need a de- demon. You're back in face paint. Right. So I was used to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was new for him. Yeah, yeah, I never did anything with my face, sadly enough. I should be covering it most of the time. But um, it was it was like I, I just got a call from him out of the blue one day. As a funny as a funny story, I was going to a bookstore where uh, the bookstore, if you ever hear Santana and Ortiz talk about a bookstore that they used to work at in, in Midtown Manhattan, uh, I was going to that bookstore that very day, and I bumped into them at the bookstore. I was going to buy some, some book. Who the hell knows? Probably the only book I've ever read in my life. And I got a call from Chris, and he says, I, I think I just got you into Chikara. And um, I didn't know how big Chikara was. I really didn't even know what Chikara was at the time. Yeah. I didn't know the, you know, how, how popular the company was. Um, but, you know, when I remember going down to, I guess, try out for, I guess it was a tryout. They just wanted to look they at They just wanted to look at me. Make sure 
didn't suck. Yeah, which I kind of did. Um, <laughs> I still do, but uh, Claudio was there, you know, Cesaro and a couple of other guys. So Quackenbush wasn't actually there that day. Claudio was just filming me and uh, we were just in the ring doing whatever. And I, I guess it worked. You know, I guess they liked it. And we got to training that day, like two hours late because we were stuck in some traffic. I don't know if you remember that. But, um, you know, it, I was just at the right place at the right time because Chris was at the right place at the right time and all the stars aligned and I found out I had to wear face paint. Didn't know he was painting my face for like six months. Yeah, like the first six months, it was like- You uh, can tell- It's like a, when, at a carnival. Yeah, you can tell when I started painting my face because it looks like I was doing it with the fucking lights off. Every time, it looks just ridiculous. So I, this is the first time we ever told this story, by the way. Nobody ever knew really? that. I'm yeah. getting exclusive. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, I mean, you mentioned Chikara and like Claudio and all the names that were in Chikara back in those days. It must- be incredible looking back thinking you know like when you guys started in Chikara the amount of talent that was there to work with straight away how much did you learn in those early days of Chikara just getting to mix it up with those guys because you've wrestled the who's who not only of the tag team division but of Chikara like if you look at who you guys have been against you've been against everybody in Chikara history just about <laughs> so how was that for you? Wow. Well, looking back on it now, we probably didn't really know at that time how big it was for us. I, I don't think we really understood. I mean, I don't want to speak for Chris, but at least personally, I, I didn't understand the magnitude of it. Yeah. Um, some of the guys that we worked against, you know, the guys that would grow to be who they are today, you know, these, these monsters of, of personalities and, and, and pro athletes, we didn't realize, I guess, what we had at the time. So uh, when, when we look at it in hindsight, we're like, God damn, it was such, such opportunity that we were given just out of the blue, I mean, there were people that that were in Shakar training for years and years and years and, and didn't get any of these opportunities. And we just kind of came from out of nowhere. And uh, we were given these 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 huge gimmicks, these huge opportunities. And mm. we were main eventing almost all the time, yeah. most of the time while we were there. And um, just to think about some of the guys we worked with, you know, the 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 colony and um, just I mean, the colony alone, just look at where all those guys are today. Um, we never got to wrestle with Claudio per se, but we, we've learned so much from him and Sarah Del Rey when, when, when they were there before they left. And um, just being around those guys, I mean, it's just, it's a, it was a, you've a had it was a waking Sarah, up and realizing, yeah. Yeah, you've had ridiculous. matches with Sarah, uh, I believe, yeah. both of you. Um, what was it like getting to work with Sarah? Because I, I believe it was more than once you worked with her. Like, such an incredible talent. She was she was incredible, and I don't think she will ever get the credit that's due yeah. for being not just the worker that she is, and for being the trainer that she is. Because man, like that was one of the things when I started there. I I realized right away like this, there was a we we walked into Takara at a very special time, mm -hmm. 2009 2010. Because I started I started going down and training in by mid 2009. Uh, it's funny, the, the way that I originally got in was I got a call from Jigsaw at like eight in the morning one day. And he's like, all right, this was right before King of Trios 2009. So this is probably in like late March. I want to guess. I think they were still doing trios in April at that time. Yeah. And he goes, uh, do you speak Spanish? And I was like, brother, you know me. I do not speak Spanish. He was like, can you act like you do? I was like, well, if I have to, does that sound good? <laughs> that could be so racist. How do you, like you speak Spanish? <laughs> And, I, and then he was like, yo, Jigsaw is racist. Right? <laughs> he was like, can, can you do Lucha? I was like, yeah, I know some Lucha. So apparently, uh, Cassandro, El Exotico, had broken his leg uh, just a few days before, tree, uh, a, a week or two before Trios. Right. And they wanted somebody to slip into that spot. So my name came up. And uh, yeah, I, I told him that. And that's when I got the invite to come down and train. And I guess as soon as they saw me, they were like, no, we're not doing that. You're, you're a deep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like just being being in in that environment, uh, the training from Claudio and Sarah was mm -hmm. second to none. It was the the uh, unfortunately I only got to train under them for a couple of years before they left. But I learned the most that I ever learned about professional wrestling training with two of them. They are unbelievable. They no matter how highly rated they are, they yeah. will always be underrated. Yeah, and I, I wish that, I hope that they get the credit they deserve one day. Yeah, I feel like it's coming to Cesaro. Uh, and, uh, yeah. we, I think it's, we're, we've been patient and we like it's the last what 10 years we've been waiting for that Cesaro push in WWE I feel like we're going to see it one day but unfortunately I think I feel like Sarah is always going to be that 
what if scenario in wrestling where she could have been the main star of the women's division in any company, any company. And it's a shame, but it, it is nice to see that so many people we speak to, they always say how much they've learned from Sarah. Male, uh, guys and girls both learned so much from her. So is that is that a bad I can hear, by the way? Yeah, that's yes. awesome. I, I was hoping he wasn't going to be making noise because he might oh, not dude. shut up. I might have to just bring him out here. Oh, dude, seriously. We, we, it's like a ringside. Let me get him because he's going to be doing this shit all day. <laughs> uh, we always have some kind of animal interference. On, <laughs> it's, it's like tradition. <laughs> if, what if, kind if of he keeps going, it? I'm going to have to send his ass somewhere else. But yeah. Oh, a right. cockatiel. Yeah. Oh, he's a pain in the ass, man. But he wants attention, so this is probably going to be the only time he'll be quiet if he's out here with us. So this is great. This interview just got so much better. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, this is the the next trios right here. This is a, a trio party. <laughs> so is is the cockatiel a member of the Pateri as well? Is that is that a thing? Uh, I guess he's going to have to be. He's such a loud mouth like us. So <laughs> I think it, it works out actually. So uh, speaking of loud mouth, then I mean, how did you? You know when you're doing a demon character, how did you adapt to doing the promos and the the mannerisms oh. and everything? Being a demon, did you have to like do your demon research to come up with this? Or? That's a good question. Shit. Um. See, we didn't talk for a while. I mean, early on, all we were doing was just grunting and, and screaming. We weren't saying words, mm. and uh, you know, we had other people that were would act as the mouthpiece for us uh, for the longest time. But I, I think that we didn't really have an opportunity to really show. Um, how we could be as characters if we were just mute the, their entire time. Yeah. So I, I guess just with evolution of our characters and the Bateri and the different directions we would be going through the years that we would just little by little start to kind of squeeze in uh, words here and there. And um, there was really no, it was just, we were just adapting to different like scenarios. We weren't really like researching demon stuff. We would just, I, I guess there were a point in time where we would try to be as creepy as possible and just kind of walk with some type of rhythm and um, just, I guess, bob our head to, to, no, to no music. But um, that, that was really, it was, it was hard for the first, I, I would say for the first couple of months for me, just because I'm, I'm such a motor mouth that I, I would rather be out there talking and babbling. And, and what, what people don't know is me and Chris could cut a hell of a promo and we haven't really had much of an opportunity to do that throughout the last decade. But um, we were able to, towards the end of our Chikara run, like around 2000, maybe 14, 15, we started little by little, you know, uttering words and putting words together. And I guess we, we, we started forming sentences uh, halfway through our run over there. But um, it was really just a little, it was just a slow build to that. And eventually, I guess nobody cared that we would start to talk again. And um, it was just tiring just not being able to talk and not being able to really, you know, um, he would scream my name sometimes, my shoot name sometimes in the brain. <laughs> Like, if there were points where I had to go for a tag, you would hear him, Louie! And I guess that was, like, the beginning of when we started talking. He would just scream my name. And I'm like, my name is not Louie, asshole. I'm Kodama. Let's, let's not forget that. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a learning curve, I guess. Because yeah. everybody was Chikara. Like, for the most part, most people talked. There was maybe a couple of the colony guys, a couple of the ants that didn't yeah. talk. But most people at least had some kind of, you know. Whereas you're depending fully on your mannerisms, you body language, your facial expressions, yeah. Yeah, instead and, of using words. Right, and it's different, and, and, and to, put, to, put, to put into perspective, like a lot of the guys that were wearing masks, they had to show a lot of body language because they couldn't show the facial expressions where we had to do, yeah, you know, we, we at least had the facial expressions. Yeah, we at least had that. We couldn't really vocalize as much as we wanted to, but uh, we had the facials and we were able to at least show some type of body language. It, you know, so we had a little bit of an advantage. The only thing was we, we weren't really talking, so. Hey, well, one place that a lot of the uh, Chikara alumni have ended up is AEW. You alluded to it earlier, Orange Cassidy, uh, you know, member of the colony. So he. What, what, what was he? What? <laughs> That's crazy. Was he? Holy shit, I'm just hearing about this for the first time. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Um, Damn. Breaking news. You ruined it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I, I would have said hello to him last week if I would have known that was him. <laughs> <laughs> so well you got you got a lot of guys i mean you're talking about him, you got gulak i mean yeah tracy williams right i mean yeah. huh? just uh, oh. all those guys are just magnificent talents i was just lucky we've worked those guys so many times i, I would probably go on i'll probably say that they were the most we, we worked like yeah. we worked those guys we worked with the company yes. oh my god honestly in, in some 
fashion or another, whether it's tag or trios or whatever. We work with the colony. It's like a, a board lot. feud oh. with uh, yeah. the colony. Yeah. <laughs> every yes. show is the colony <laughs> and the battery. And it's yeah. still, it still great every time. Uh, is that something you'd want to reignite in AEW? I mean, I know it won't be the colony, uh, but you've got. Oh, practice. absolutely. I would love yeah. it. Those guys, man, those are guys that we work with every day of the oh, week. Yeah. I, I yeah. would love on Sunday. I would love a Dustin and, and Orange Cassidy match or uh, a Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy yeah, match, yeah. I should say. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, man, those guys are just a wealth of talent. And I don't think Orange Cassidy gets enough credit, you know, uh, for, for what he's capable of doing. And it's not just what he could do in the ring, it's just what he could do outside of the ring. Mm. And uh, the, the wealth of knowledge that boy got, it's just, it's uh, unmatched, I think. Yeah. And uh, just being around those guys, learning from those guys. And, and in fairness, like their style, and not only the colony, but just everybody in Chikara, their style wasn't necessarily the style that we came up learning. You know, we learned yeah. more of a calling stuff on the fly and more of a brawling type style where, um, where a lot of the guys in Chikara were, you know, they were lucha based guys. They, they, that was their, their, their foundation. And uh, a lot of times that, you know, we would, have to call matches really kind of from the beginning through the end and a lot of the in-between stuff and we we started training with, without any of that we, we were just kind of going on the fly so there was a bit of a styles clash for a little while and then mm -hmm. uh, uh the, the the thing i gotta say about those guys and everybody chikara the patience they have for us just so it, that while we were adapting to the style that's something that i'll, I'll take with me to the grave because i mean I, as many times as we might have messed up some stuff up and when i say we i clearly mean me but we, <laughs> you know we might have messed some stuff up throughout the years and uh, it was just adapting to that to that to that fast pace you know quick style and trying to remember things i mean those guys all had patience with us and uh orange cassidy the colony i mean um i, I could name everybody there they all had their, their their time was given to us and it was the world it, not only their bodies but their time and you know yeah can't say can't say anything more no, than that. speaking for myself i had, i trained um a lot of my early training was with johnny rods in brooklyn yeah and uh with Johnny Rods, you're not going to get the modern style. Like, he's an old school dude. So you're going to learn your fundamentals. And there's no, like, calling a match. It was up until I got into Chikara, me calling a match, it was, you want to do something in the beginning? All right, this will be the turnaround. Here's our finish. And then go out there and put it together. Right. So walking into Chikara and just w walking into, you know, most independent wrestling at that time, which I hadn't, like, starting to call a match with somebody and it's boom 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 you're like whoa what is this <laughs> so it was it took a lot to get used to but yeah i can imagine yeah. it's such a fast-paced style the the lucha style is something you yeah. have to plan you can't just call lucha on the yeah fly. no you can't call that on the fly <laughs> and a lot of guys wearing masks sometimes you can't even hear them in the ring <laughs> you know because they sound muffled so you kind of there's really only only no way to really remember shit. you got to remember shit yeah, because remember you don't you're not going to hear it. You're not going to understand what they're saying. You know? so, so are you looking forward to maybe doing some more work on AEW Dark in the future and being given the opportunity to finally run your mouth? Like you say you, <laughs> you want to speak. This, this seems like a great chance. There's hundreds of thousands of people watching online. What better place to run your mouth than AEW Dark? I, I mean, I would love to run my mouth all over AEW. I mean, <laughs> dark and dynamite and every oh, opportunity. I mean, elevation. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a that environment, that AEW environment. I mean, anybody you speak to that that it has been backstage is going to tell you the same thing. I mean, uh, it, it's a such a chill, family like atmosphere. And coming from where we came from, where we we know a good, you know, ninety percent of the people back there that we've worked with, at least ninety percent of the people back there at some point throughout our careers. Um, being back there and just having the opportunity, having the platform to, to let us do whatever we can do is, it, it means the world to me. I mean, especially after us being together, tag teaming for 11 years, you know, this, we're going into our 11th year. So, um, what way to do it then there? And I'd love to run my mouth to all those guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would I think be we got a lot to, I think we got a lot to offer in the yeah. ring, outside the ring. I mean, um, I just, if, if we get a chance, then we're going to create an opportunity. We, we, I'm not asking for an opportunity, just just want a chance. Because opportunities, people, a lot of people just get opportunities for whatever reason. Just give me a chance, we'll make our own fucking opportunity. That's <laughs> that's the way I see it. Can we curse on here? Of course you can. Go, go. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know the, you know the guys in the UK are a little bit more free with those things. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we... We feel like we use the uh, the word cunt as a, a term of endearment. Oh, it's, it's, like, beautiful. it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's the best thing. I call my best friend a cunt all the time, you know, and he's my best friend. So, 
Uh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna call my mom after this. I don't want it. I don't want it to slip. So, so I don't want to get that word in my head right now. So you're gonna be upset. <laughs> oh, sure. I thought of what you said you were gonna call it. Never mind. Uh, yeah, ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. Um, I don't want to corrupt the battery if that's possible. Um, no, I don't know if that's it. possible. Impossible. We're, we're destroyed already. <laughs> Speaking of corruption, I guess the Dark Order. They're known for corrupting people. Uh, they're always trying to recruit people on AEW, uh, whether it's Dynamite, being the Elite, Dark. I, I really do think you guys would fit into the Dark Order like a hand to a glove. And whether that's as the battery or as yourselves, I feel like that's somewhere you guys would fit. As a tag team, like there's already a tag team in the Dark Order, there's uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver, but I feel like there's room for a second. Uh, is that something you guys would look at doing? Would would you be open to the the chance? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't say why. I mean, they're the most, they're one of the most, you know, popular groups in AEW in wrestling today. Yeah. Um, John Silver and Alex Reynolds are two of the best tag teams, or one of the best tag teams in the world, yeah, I should say. Them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. We've, and we've wrestled them many times before that on the Independence. Um, and I, I think our style, our hard hitting style, will mesh well with those guys. Yeah. Um, I'd rather just kick somebody's head off <laughs> than than do anything else. So I think it'll work well with those guys. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that. Um, like I said, I think uh, I think the the Bateri in particular fits in well with the dark Order. Oh yeah. Maybe they need a bit of yeah, I, I they need a bit of You know, the, <laughs> they all wear masks. I think I think we could uh, get away with two of the members just having face paint, right? Yeah, break it up that. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix it up a little bit. A little diversion there. I don't, I don't see why not. That sounds like a good idea. But what was it like? Let, let me text. Wrestling? Let me text Tony Khan right now and tell him. Oh, yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> just tell him about my idea, won't you? He knows who we are if you just say ringsiders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what was it like for you getting to wrestle uh, the Dark Order on Dart then? So yeah, go ahead. No, it was awesome. It was uh, it was a great, it was a great experience. It was great looking up at the board and seeing uh our names across from them because we've known them for years. They're our friends and uh, it, it, it was just really nice. It was, it was a good, uh, very good entry for us. It felt good. Uh, there was a lot of nostalgia, like looking back because we had that match, you know, I don't know, eight years ago we were doing that match. Right. So it, it felt really good to be, to, for that to be our first, our first showing. Yeah. And it, it was surprisingly got a lot of attention online to a lot of the, um, a, a lot of people that, you know, would recognize that it was the Batiri even without the paint. And uh, I think that was kind of, it was kind of cool that people didn't forget, you know, because we've been around for a while, but we also haven't done a lot. Yeah, the last few years have been quiet. So it was nice to know that people uh, still know who we are and- And appreciate yeah. it, you know, and, and for that, I mean, I, I can't say it anymore. I mean, it, it, mean, it means a lot that people still remember and people went out of their way to, 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 uh, to show their excitement for that match, especially knowing that, you know, we had such a long history with those guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was quite the experience just working with those guys for for those few minutes that we had, and um, and it felt it felt like I don't know how to say it. I, I guess it felt natural. Like it, it wasn't weird. It was just it felt like it it was meant to happen. Mm. It felt like we were doing it every day. You know what I mean? Like I, I guess this, I don't know how to explain it, but um, it felt right. I guess is probably the, the the best way I can word it. So hopefully we're gonna see some more of the Bateri in AEW. Uh, I mean, I know you can't probably say much or. I um, not been told yet, but I don't know. It depends when you air this. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll be on AW Dark this upcoming Tuesday, which again, I don't know when this is gonna this is gonna pop up. Uh, on this the... is going up Saturday, so oh, tomorrow. so we're Saturday they're gonna announce yeah. the match for uh, for Tuesday. Yeah, so I guess there you go. I guess we can say today you found out that we're on AW Dark. I think I hope. No, well, maybe after maybe, the, after maybe this they're gonna it. just cut that shit right <laughs> off. They're gonna edit it out. But yeah, we'll be on at least this week. Um, and uh, yeah, the future is bright. I mean, I, I think uh, I think we made a good impression. Um, I think we showed that that uh, that we're hard hitting mofo's, and um, and we, we can hang. You know, just we just need we just need the time in the ring, and we're gonna hang with whoever we're in the ring with. Simple as that. We've been doing it long enough. Well, when the when everything starts to get back to normal, I know it's such a cliche term at the moment when things are back to normal. Um, but when things are somewhat more normal and you can travel, are you looking at coming to the UK anytime soon? Because oh, man. as soon as we can get yeah. there, as soon as we can get back. <laughs> One of my all-time favorite memories was touring the UK. Even really? A couple of years back yeah. with, with Fight Club Pro and Chikara. Um, I mean, I, I've never had such a good time on any tour than, than that, that, that those couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. All the time we've spent in the UK has been amazing. 
amazing. The, the best people, the best crowds. It's it's incredible. Like, yeah. We love it there. The kebabs. Well, the ones that we've interacted with yeah. anyway. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it, he, I, I always have this uh, discussion whenever an American mentions it. What did you say? Kebabs? Yeah, kebabs. What is it? Can, can you spell it for me? Well, <laughs> spell it? <laughs> what? I know it's not B O B, right? So K A B A B S? Kebabs. It's, it's kebab. Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I was completely drunk and that thing saved my life. <laughs> I, I came out to Chicago for All In a couple of years ago and everybody there was like, oh, we'll grab a kebab. And I was like, a what? A, a kebab? <laughs> and they're like, oh, say that thing that you British people say, uh, twat. And I was like, twat. <laughs> it's it's T W A T, twat. And they're like, oh, twat. no, it's twat. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> I love it. Well, every time it comes bottle, up. Twat, twat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a kebab I, I think kebab sounds better to be fair but uh, <laughs> yeah i love the i love the american accent like the differences between how we say certain things it's it kind of makes more sense with the american way of saying it like aluminum instead of aluminium. aluminium yeah <laughs> and, you know and you say you say tomato right I believe. yeah yeah, it's matter. Like I don't know, the American way of saying things just sounds cooler. Um, well, and we're from New York, so we have even a sillier way of saying things in New York. So. I've been to New York. I've been to New York. Best place. Like we got America. water and we got coffee. Coffee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got tomato. There's a D in the tomato when we say it in New York. Oh yeah, the it's the the New York T, isn't it? Like you say, uh, D. The T is a D. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Water. Uh, yeah, you go. Yeah. That sounds familiar. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. I cannot wait to come back to America. Like, I, I think the last, yeah, the last time I went was to go to All In, and that was an incredible experience. I wish I could do that again. Um, when things are up and running again, I want to come back and see half of these American independents have been watching during this pandemic. We've had no wrestling here, uh, but you guys in America, you've been keeping. The independents have been. This is like the best I've ever been for me personally. I think I feel like the independents have peaked right now. Like the talent here, well, sorry, in America is. I can't think of a better time. Like I know two thousand nine Ring of Honor, you know that that was incredible. There was Chikara, oh, yeah. but like right now the the independents are bursting with talent, and I can't wait to come over and see him. But if there was like a promotion you could recommend for someone watching now, like one of the, the independents you think more people should know of, what would it be? Well, right now, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be biased and say uh, Blitzkrieg Pro okay. who runs yep. out of Enfield, Connecticut. We're, we just so happen to be the tag team champion. That's, <laughs> that's not why I'm putting them over. What a crazy but, world, right? <laughs> but, yeah, but you got a lot of talent from, from the New England uh, and the Northeast area just uh, crammed into that one venue uh running shows out of Enfield Connecticut and uh the, the the atmosphere backstage you could you could feel the positivity back there and that that transcends in the ring and uh yeah they have, every time we've had a show uh over there the, the crowd has always been uh super enthusiastic uh the shows are always from top to bottom stacked and everybody you can see that everybody busts their ass to put on a good performance um so if there's any promotion that I'm going to put on the top of that list that that maybe a lot of people might not have heard of is, is Blitz Let's creep pro. Sorry, Jeremy. Not you. Jeremy's a promoter. Right? Sorry. Let's creep yeah, I'm, I'm going to say the same. I'm going to say Blitzkrieg and also Beyond. I mean, Beyond's mm. really, oh, yeah. really in the last few years. And I think that goes to what you were saying, like with the indies now is in over the last like five, six years, like WWE scooped up so much talent. Yeah. And I feel like all it's done is make the rest of the guys hungrier. Yeah. And I think you're seeing you're seeing that come out in a lot of independent wrestlers now in the last five, five, six years. And especially now you've seen a lot of hungry guys that want to show what they have. And that's why I think indie wrestling has really been great. Uh, it's a shame with the pandemic that the crowds have been dying down, mm. but, uh, wait, 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 you mean like dying? No, no. Oh, okay. No. Cause I mean, it's kind of ironic that, <laughs> no. oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> not having, that's not what I meant, but. Not, not, oh, not having crowds is, uh, is obviously put a big uh, a damper on things, but yeah. the work itself, I think, <laughs> is going through the roof and it's going to continue to go up because you have a lot of hungry guys that are, they're looking to make a living doing what they love. And that's yeah. what's going to happen when the pressure's on. Like, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see guys doing their best. 
They oh, give, so give true. Yeah, um, like you said, the WWE signed up so much talent, but all that did was make more spaces on the independence for people yeah. to step up, and they've done it. And it's it's great to see because a lot of people, especially in the UK, a lot of people are saying British wrestling's dead, and you know we've been hit by a few things in the last year. Um, personally, at one point, I was like, I'm done with British wrestling. I couldn't be a fan of it. Um, but now looking at it, it's like the talent is still there. And yeah. I don't want to not support them just because of other stuff that's happened. So it's good to see it still going. And in America, especially, even though you've there's been a lot of talent signed up, somehow, somewhere, the talent still steps up afterwards. There's always people to take those spots. And, you know, like if you guys were to sign with AEW, for example, someone on the independents would take your spot. And that's good to know, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, you know, the good thing about the promotions out there right now, the indie promotions is, um, you know, wherever you, wherever you throw a promotion, you're going to have somebody in that area that's, that's going to be ready yes. to step up, you know? So uh, whether we go in direction A or direction B or direction C, wherever we go, uh, you best believe it, it would take no time before somebody else pops up. And uh, I mean, not, not that we're doing anything really crazy these days, but um, there's always somebody that's hungry and eager and ready for, for the chance to, to, to kind of show what, what, what they can do. Yeah. Um, and the good thing is a lot of the promotions that, that we're friendly with, you know, they're, they're open to accepting unfamiliar faces and to give them the spotlight, give them the opportunity that maybe they wouldn't get someplace else. So that's what's most important, I think, uh, about the Northeast, uh, you know, the, the New York, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, you know, Massachusetts, th that area with, with all these promotions, Maine, also limitless. Um, yeah. These guys, these guys have no shame and no problem grabbing somebody that you've never heard of before and making a star out of them on independence. Um, so that's that that's special. That's special that the guys like that that run those companies uh, have the patience and have the uh, trust in somebody completely new, completely strange to them to, to do something for them like that. So that's pretty cool. So true. I was speaking to Randy from Limitless a couple of months right. ago. Um, and I was saying like he's got a really good track record of anyone he makes the Limitless champion ends up getting signed. Like there's Yo, Randy, you gotta, you gotta put them straps on us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that when we spoke to him, he was like, um, oh, I'm gonna make uh well Casanova's a champion and right. he just got signed to WWE. MJF previously, um, is it August Square in NXT? Um, yeah, August yeah. Gray. yeah, yeah, and they've all been signed now. So if you, you boys uh, you know, after a, a contract, it's like you said, you just need to get those straps. He's got the magic wand. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that, man. Um, personally, I like I said, I want to see you as much as possible on TV. It's been too long since I've been able to watch you guys compete anyway. I used to be, have, um, you know, I'd, I'd get the Chikara DVDs. And that that would be it. I've got a good collection of Chikara DVDs, um, but I'd have to wait months to be able to to watch them. And yeah. I was that, you know, it so far behind it was it wasn't even funny but it would be great if i could actually you know just turn on aw dynamite dark ring of honor nxt or something and see you guys kicking ass every week that would be awesome that would be awesome too so I that's agree. a dream man that's a yeah, dream. Man. that's what we're striving for we're shooting for we're shooting for the stars and uh we're not we're not we're not getting old anytime soon but um yeah. you know we're, we're 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 hungrier now than we've ever been so um that just goes to show you that that the passion is still there no matter what no matter what fucking life throws at us still we're still out to do something well, that's we're good gonna, to you. And, you know like i said i started training at 15 years old i'm 36 years old right now well 36 <laughs> yeah. i I've, i look old uh, oh. <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm i'm, I'm hungry than ever I'm, I'm feeling great it's uh yeah i'm feeling i'm feeling really good Honestly, dude, take this as a compliment. I thought I was older than you. So not that that would make sense in my head, given that I've watched you for about 12 years. But yeah, man, uh, fair play. Well done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be great if we could get you on again down the line. Jamie wanted to be on this interview. He's had a power cut at his side of town, so he couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, but if you could come on again in a few months and we'll catch up, see where you guys, you know what you're doing. That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime man. This yeah, has man. been a blast. Absolutely. Anytime. I seriously, it's uh, absolutely flown by this interview. You know, when you see you have some interviews where you can just have a laugh and it goes by like that. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't say who. There's somewhere you you feel every minute, but I, yeah. I I enjoy I enjoy every interview. Every interview we do, it's always fun. 
I'd love to get you back on. But before you go, have you got anything you'd like to promote? Upcoming matches, merchandise, social medias? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll be on Dark this Tuesday. Um, we're on Twitter. We, you know, he has a new page on Twitter, the Chris Peaks. I'm the Louis Valley. We still got at the Bateri on Twitter. Um, you know, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. You know, we're on all that shit. You're on all, all talk, TikTok? No. no. no, no, no. What, what's not, it mean? Not yet. I don't think we got a TikTok move. So we're gonna I was going to say, TikTok. I think we no, should we see have... the Bateri. Full yeah, face paint, everything, doing those TikTok dances. There's money there, money on the table. There might be. You know what? You might not be wrong. <laughs> yeah, there might be. Yo, if that AEW stuff doesn't work out for us, you've got a career on TikTok. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, been an absolute pleasure. Uh, but for now, we've been Ringsiders, the Bateri. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having us. This has been great. Awesome, yes, dude.